Today we're going to be testing armatures to determine whether they're good or bad. Uh, first step you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, multimeter and set it to test ohms, which is a horseshoe looking symbol. Interestingly enough, a little history lesson. It's the symbol of the Greek god Omega, but anyways, whatever that means. So you have your armature here and this is what an armature looks like they, diff, depending on what kind of armature they have different bearings and whatnot this right here this brass part at the bottom where your where your brushes sit is um, called your commutator and in each commutator there's different sectors uh, little brass sectors and that's what you're going to be testing alright so just to give you a close-up view of us actually testing and how you do that is when we test you make your little mark on the tab that you want to test just to start off so we know where we started from and you're just going to test these two sectors these two sectors and you just slowly work your way around the armature now if you come across a bad sector or one that doesn't test you know that the armature is bad and also, um, if you come across an armature, we call it jump starting, that's in a clipper and the clipper's not running, and you can move the blade drive and the armature suddenly starts up, you know automatically that there is a bad sector in the armature, and um, that tells you right away that that's a bad armature. So that's some diagnostics, diagnosis that you can give uh, even without tearing apart the motor. And this is an Andis armature. Uh, if you can see the multimeter, they run at about 125 or so ohms is what you're going to get. And ohms is a unit of measure. And what we're measuring here is, um, the, first of all, continuity, which is does it complete an electrical circuit. So if, if I test these across, we have zero so that it's an electrical circuit with zero resistance. So back to testing the AMS armature, we have 125.1 ohms is what it's reading and so as we go about testing we test all the different sectors uh, just one right next to the other and work our way around the armature and as you can see we there's a little variation in the te in the readings um, we have 116 there and what we're looking for is it needs to be within 10 percent of each other so right now we're at somewhere around 8% and so that's okay. Once you get outside of 10% um, that's what we deem as a bad armature and eventually it's going to short out. Now if you get to a sector where there's no reading at all you know that there's a short or a broken wire inside the armature and that armature is bad. Also sometimes we'll get a reading uh, as high as 900 and you know that um, that armature is bad as well. Now just a little variations in armatures. Each armature brand tests a little different. So you can see Oster's read at 8 or so. And so you still want to apply the 10% principle to those. Um, basically what you're looking for is consistency and making sure that there's no shorts in your armatures. Now, as far as testing fields goes, here's an Oster uh, field. These are pretty much, fields are pretty much the same uh, throughout. There's kind of two types of fields. There's electrical fields where the electricity is actually flowing through the field. And then there is just a magnet field like the Andis has. Uh, so all you're going to do to test your Oster field is you're going to touch one tab to the uh, to the brass hole where your brush goes in and then your other tab you're going to touch the tab where the uh, end cap will touch and so you can see there that we have continuity and so you flip it over to the other side and we have continuity there too. Basically it's kind of a pass or fail on these. If you have continuity it's good, if you don't it's bad. Now I'm also going to take this time just to show you a difference, the difference between uh, the two types of fields for Andis AGCs. Um, these are the two different fields here. Uh, 
one's for the super clippers and one's for the regular ones and the only difference really is the super clippers have an AGC like a super 2 has a thicker magnet it's kind of hard to see in here but it has a thicker magnet than the regular non super 2's and then the other thing that you can determine is they have in the non super 2's they have a little lip on the inside of the shell not the magnet part but the actual shell there's a little lip there and that's why the regular ones are more expensive to purchase because there's more machining involved it really makes no sense but that's the way it is so that's how you determine the difference between a super uh, field and a regular field as far as the Andis AGC clippers go.